Hey everyone, I'm John. Welcome back to my shop. Today I finally get to glue up my dovetailed keepsake box. Once I get it cleaned up and sanded smooth, I'll apply five coats of finish and then buff out a coat of paste wax. Came out looking really good. I hope you'll stick around and watch it come together. The first thing I had to do was sand the inside surfaces. It's a lot easier to do this at this stage than after it's glued up. You do have to be careful not to remove too much material, especially from the pin boards, or it can affect the fit of your half lap joints. Next, I move right into the glue up. It's always a good idea to rehearse this, especially when multiple joints have to come together at the same time. With the hinge constructed the way it is, with brass rod in the end of the lid and into the pin boards, the sequence really only worked one way. I started by attaching the lid to the pin boards and then added the front tail board followed by the back. I like to use these small offcuts as glue sticks. It makes it easy to get the right amount of glue where it needs to go without making a huge mess. I had to make sure this box was square since the lid is already attached and can't easily be changed to fit the box. If your box is way out of square, you can use clamps placed across the long diagonal to pull it back into alignment. If you've watched any of my other videos, you will see that I try to show you the mistakes I make, along with the fixes I use to correct them. In this case, there were a few tiny gaps in my dovetails. I used some small end grain wedges that I split off a piece of cherry and paired smooth to fill those gaps. This does a great job of making those gaps nearly invisible once the finish is applied. Once the glue was dry, I removed the clamps and used a flush cut saw to trim off the extra material. The next step was to flush up the half lap dovetails with a hand plane. I worked from the outside towards the middle to avoid splitting out any unsupported fibers. At this stage you start to get a good idea how the dovetails are going to look when the finish is applied. I used a hand plane to make sure the bottom was flat. This helps the box to sit without rocking when it's placed on a flat surface. Keeping the back end of the plane on an adjacent edge helps to keep the plane square to the side. I used hand planes to cut a chamfer on all the sharp edges all the way around the box. This will make it a lot more comfortable to pick up and hold. I used my low angle block plane to clean up some sharp edges at the front edge of the box opening. I love the spiral shavings that come out of a sharp plane when it's skewed like this. I finished the cut with a chisel on the parts that I couldn't quite reach with the plane. The finishing process has become a much more enjoyable part of woodworking for me. I love watching the grain come to life and take on some color when the finish goes on. The finish I'm using for this box is oil based armor seal. The wood was thirsty so the temptation is to flood it with finish. It's important to get enough on the wood but not leave so much that it creates runs or drips. Oh yeah. 
I especially like how finish looks when it's applied to dovetails with contrasting woods. There are a few places on this box that showed a small amount of figure, almost like wormholes, which is a really cool effect. It's important when finishing any solid wood project to apply finish to all sides of the wood. If moisture is allowed to enter one side because it didn't get any finish, it could potentially warp or twist that board, and those forces are powerful enough to break joints or crack panels that didn't account for wood movement. It made my day seeing that first coat of finish on there, knowing that it was only going to get better with more coats. In between coats, I lightly sanded the whole box with 320 grit sandpaper. I ended up applying a total of five coats of finish, allowing them to cure for several hours between coats. I used a rag that I dampened with mineral spirits to clean off the dust left by sanding. I like to use clean t-shirt material to make a small applicator pad when applying this finish. The last coat that I applied was very light. I wanted to leave just a very thin film of finish over the project. Once the final coat was cured, I used 4 out steel wool to remove any dust nibs and smooth out the finish. To apply the paste wax, I use a pad of steel wool and go over the whole box. The finish I used is great by itself, but I like the extra depth that comes from the wax. I have to thank Paul Sellers for sharing his method of buffing out a wax finish with a horsehair shoe shine brush. He really does a great job adding an extra layer of depth and luster to the finish. I'm really happy with the way this box turned out. The hinge works great and I like the contrast between the maple and the cherry. I also think the proportions are just right and it's going to make a great gift. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave any comments or questions down below and I'll get to those as soon as I can. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that so you don't miss any of the new videos that I post. Thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I hope this video inspires you to get out in your shop and make something that challenges you. See you in the next one.